Hi guys, once again, my name is Fred and welcome to Summer Shear Farms. I know most of you have been requesting for more videos about cattle farm, but because I haven't been at the farm so much, I have been missing out. You know, I'm in Kenya now and as part of my journey, I'm visiting a farm and we all know how advanced Kenya is when it comes to daily farming and cattle farming in general. I'm very privileged um, to visit this farm and be able to learn more about dairy farming very few of us in Ghana and in West Africa actually practice intensive farming and if you're old and familiar to this channel then you know we advocate for intensive farming and that is what we at Samenshia Farm are also trying to do. Today I've come to Kenya to learn more about how they're doing dairy farming and also how they are managing intensive farming. Mm -hmm. So come along with me as I meet with Eunice um who is um the farm manager here right mm -hmm. hi Eunice how are you doing I'm good I'm good how are you good 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 yes thank you so much for having us um welcome. just to give you a bit of context mm -hmm. so this channel mm -hmm. is for farmers okay. everywhere in the world mm -hmm. that are thinking about going into farming mm -hmm. We have so much great ideas and practices in Africa, mm -hmm. but we are not putting it out there for sure. people to learn, sure. right? So yes. what we are doing with this channel is to put all the information, good ideas, even mistakes mm -hmm. out there. Yes. So that somebody who is sitting there mm -hmm. and thinking about going into farming can learn one or two from us. Sure. Sure. So we've been doing that in Ghana. Mm -hmm. um, in Ghana, we don't do intensive farming. Mm -hmm. Our cattle are running around. Okay. and it's causing a lot of trouble mm -hmm. destroying people's farm and we're also not able to scale mm -hmm. because if they are running around you and they are plenty you can't control them sure. so i've come here mm -hmm. to learn from you mm -hmm. how you're managing mm -hmm. your intensive cattle yeah, your yeah. cows are big yeah, i haven't yeah, seen yeah. this big cow in <laughs> ghana before <laughs> guys tell me if i'm wrong in the comment below <laughs> but i haven't seen such a big cow <laughs> in Ghana. Mm -hmm. So how, first of all, mm -hmm. please tell us a bit about yourself. Well, um, Eunice Njoki, mm -hmm. uh, vet by profession. Okay. Um, right now I'm working in Maramba Estate mm -hmm. as a dairy manager, the technician here. Mm -hmm. I do all the stuff, all the feed formulation, artificial insemination, uh, taking care and managing generally all the stuff about the animals. Mm -hmm. Uh, around here we have 65 animals, we have 30 milkers and uh, 35 the rest, the dry cows, the heifers, the calves and we have one bull. We don't keep bulls a lot because economically it's, they are not viable. For okay. us we have less than 15 acres to take care of those animals. Mm -hmm. So if we do keep the bulls and they are heavy feeders, we won't be able to keep them. So we concentrate much more on the heifers because uh, we are very near it's, we are just 20 kilometers from the capital city yeah so our milk has a ready market yeah actually we don't even move the milk from our farm yeah. they come in and pick the milk from there mm. so that's why we are more into the heifers mm. other than the bulls mm. uh, right now we are milking the 30 milkers that we are doing we have an average of 580 to 620 mm. so that's an average of around 20 liters per cow yeah. and there are some that are very high at 30 40 others are below 15 the ones that are almost going to dry mm. dry by dry i mean they are almost going to into calving so okay. there's that period that we will stop milking them yeah. for two months then they calve down then we start milking again. Okay. So that's basically it. Okay. Yes. Good. Thank. I have so, <laughs> so, so many questions I want to ask you, <laughs> but I know we're gonna do different episodes for this. Um, yes. mm -hmm. Let's first of all, um, maybe start with um, the breeds that you have here. Yes. So what kind of breeds do you have here that you're milking? Uh, what we have here is uh, pure host infections. Okay. But we have around five animals that are a mixture of freak view. Uh -huh. Freak view is more of a beef animal uh -huh. that was introduced in Kenya for dual purpose, both milk and beef. Uh -huh. So we crossed that for the beef part of it. If we get the bulls, we can get a good, better market. 
Um, but over the time, we have realized that they are very heavy feeders, mm -hmm. yet their milk is not so much. Okay. So right now, what we are doing, we are doing pure breeding of, mm. for host infections, okay. which are high producers. Yes, they are heavy feeders, but they are also high producers of milk. Okay. That's why we have so much milk at okay. the moment. I mm. will I will come to the feeding part, mm -hmm. but you also did mention that you're a vet. Yes. So so t tell me about mm -hmm. your experience as a vet in Kenya, mm -hmm. because in Ghana, mm -hmm. I've never seen a vet in Ghana who also is working at the farm. Mm -hmm. They are at the office, and when you need them, you mm -hmm. go, you pay, they come, mm -hmm. then they go back. So yeah. tell me about your, your experience, because this is very unique and new to me. <laughs> I wish I had a vet in my farm 24-7. <laughs> So uh, tell me about that. Um, well, in Kenya, we are so many. Let mm. me say, generally, we are so many. Mm -hmm. Most of, the, um, in the 90s, 80s, every vet used to be absorbed by the government. Mm. So most of them were government workers for extension, for treatment, and for all that stuff. But the development of the governments in our country made it to be more spacious. So mm. they are not absorbing them anymore. Mm. The farmers have gone very intensive, mm -hmm. so they need more of us. Mm. That's why some of us are in the farms. Mm. A farm like this one invests in 65 animals. One animal like this one, what we have here, I don't know whatever doras, yeah. but in Kenya shillings, yeah. it's around 300 Kenya thousand Kenya shillings. Yes, yes yeah. because she's a heifer, mm -hmm. uh, fast calving, she's producing over 25 kgs of milk, mm -hmm. and she's very young by the way, she's just two years, three months. So, with that kind of intensive care, mm -hmm. you need someone who has the technical know how. Mm. And also, the best thing about uh, having a vet in your farm. They are all around. When we go to the to the colleges, we are taught about the feeds, we are taught about the animal health, we are taught about the management of your staff. So it's a one-stop shop. So that's why uh, some of these farmers that are in our country, that's why they are using the vets. Okay. Yes, okay. Yes. That, that, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And um, so did you move straight from school? to mm. the farm or did you work in in the office a, a bit before oh yes i worked uh, i worked for the government of kenya for yeah. five years nice. i was mostly an extension worker yeah. an extension worker means you go and train the farmers mm -hmm. on the best practices, practices for the yeah. for the for the animals yeah that was very general yeah. you are in cattle bees you are in goats yeah you're in rabbits yeah. and everything yeah. Uh, I've also worked for an NGO uh -huh. um, that was catering more, it was very specific on a disease called East Coast Fever. Okay. Well, I don't know whether you have it in West Africa, yeah, yeah. but around here there is a tick that bites these animals and it causes so much, um, so much damage. Yeah. Is, it, um, is it the lumpy disease? N not the lumpy no, disease. No, not the lumpy no, no, disease. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, but um, the... The funniest thing is that the um, the lymph the lymph nodes yeah. are the ones that are most swollen, so that's how you notice it. But it is more in East Africa, yes, East Africa. not uh, the in West, the West Africa. Africa. So there was that research mm -hmm. we were doing with the International Livestock Research Center. Yeah. I worked there for several years. Yeah. Then after that, I've been in farms. Good, in good. This, mm -hmm. And and which one do you enjoy most? Uh, I know we are going to come to the to the animals, but yes. uh, I'm very interested in in your story and what mm -hmm. you do because mm -hmm. i think the success mm -hmm. anybody that's watching us and wants to start a project mm -hmm. their success will depend on people like you sure. to be able to contribute either through mm -hmm. an extension officer or yes. being on the farm mm -hmm. to be able to succeed right mm -hmm. but because most of us don't even have the skills and the ideas right yes. and that's why i'm, I'm focusing a bit more about <laughs> um okay. but but what, what have you enjoyed most? Is it being at a farm or, or being um, a, an extension officer? Well, uh, being, I think it's both. both yeah. um, but being on the farm is more fun yeah. because it's all about expanding your, what, your scope of knowledge. Yeah. So every day you have a new challenge, you can do one or two. This. Uh, in the government, mm -hmm. I also enjoyed it because what I have, I was giving it to others. Yeah. I was training farmers yeah. and I really loved the dairy and the apiary, apiculture. I also did so much about bees. Okay. So those two lines, 
uh, actually even if I go back to where I was, yeah. I'm very proud of myself uh, because they produce a lot of honey, they yeah. produce a lot of milk. Yeah. So I know there is an impact that I did there. Exactly. Because in this world, what we usually say in my tribe, yeah. What you have, you will die with it. Yeah. Unless yeah. you give it out. Exactly. That's the only way you can help this world. Exactly. I can give you money today, but you spend it the next moment. Exactly. But the knowledge I'll give you, yeah. it will be with you forever. And which is what you are sharing with us today. Exactly. So, so thank you so exactly. much. I think we, we, we have the same goal here. And um, I hope that you will appreciate. Please, if you're watching us, write in the comment and say thank you um, to Eunice for having that mentality to share with us. Most veterinaries, you even call them to your farm, they won't come. You know, they come, they want to go, and, and Beatrice has sacrificed, and that's such an impactful work here. Um, thank you guys again for watching. I'm going to continue this episode with um, Beatrice, and we're gonna dive into so many different things because there's so many things we can learn from her and from how she's running her farm. Thank you so much for watching. Tomorrow at the same time, I'm going to release another video where we are going to now focus on more on the breeds, dairy versus beef. We're going to talk about feeding. We're going to talk about their housing, diseases, control, um, everything that we can learn from her as much as she gave us the time. But thank you and thank you so much again.